The tutorial character is something that not a whole lot of people think about in video games. Characters like Toriel from Undertale and GLaDOS from Portal all serve the purpose of allowing the player to learn from the game before they start getting into it. However, today I am going to be talking about something a little bit different. Tutorial characters in multiplayer titles. Specifically, games with different characters for you to play and not just one nameless nobody. So games like Overwatch 2, Team Fortress 2, Dead by Daylight, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and Deceive Inc. Yes, I am indeed bringing up Deceive Inc. again, because I believe their tutorial character is one of the best examples of a tutorial character in all of gaming. And you'll see why in just a moment. But first, be sure to subscribe, as I do wacky content like this on a regular basis. Also make sure to like and comment, because numbers make my brain go burr. <laughs> and with that, let's get started. The tutorial character, at least in multiplayer titles, is a class or character you play as in a video game and is meant to serve as the beginning point for many players. A way for people to get adjusted to the general gameplay of the video game they're playing. This is very different from the tutorial character in most single player games, as those guys don't ever shut the fuck up. <laughs> a good example of what I'm talking about is Kirby in the Super Smash Bros. series. He has multiple jumps and a decent recovery, making it easier for newer players to get back on stage. His attacks are as basic as a pumpkin sized latte, allowing players to get a feel for how Smash's unique combat system works. He even has an ability that allows you to try other characters' abilities at will. His game plan is very straightforward, and his combos are relatively easier to land than most other characters. Pretty solid character, even though he's a literal blob. <laughs> Or take Trapper from Dead by Daylight. He doesn't have a very complicated power, only being allowed to pick up and set down bear traps, which leads to slower gameplay than most other killers. His main way of attacking is, well, the normal attack that every other killer gets. Because of this, it is very easy for people to understand, since there is not a lot that you have to remember about the killer's power, and you can focus more on the gameplay itself rather than needing to do complex button inputs like you're playing Tekken 6. I would argue that the soldier from TF2 is another example of a tutorial character, but he also has a higher skill ceiling than similar characters. His rocket launcher is forgiving in terms of aim, since it deals splash damage and travels somewhat slowly, but it also allows for very advanced movement in the form of rocket jumping. He has more HP than most of the classes in this game, at 200 HP, which gives newer players some breathing room when it comes to surviving encounters. Plus, he even has a weapon that serves as a tutorial for his most utilized movement tool, allowing newer players to rocket jump without fear of dying to self-damage. Those are just a few examples from a few games. I could also list out examples such as Peace Shooter from the Garden Warfare games, Tracer from Overwatch, the Slider Shot Jr. from Zatoon, but I think I've defined what a tutorial character is enough. Now let's get into my gripes about these characters, and why I think Deceive Inc. has one of the best designed tutorials out of all of these. Because it wouldn't be a zombie video if I wasn't praising a game I was currently playing. Tutorial characters aren't exactly known for their viability. I know, competitive viability shouldn't be the top priority when making a game, especially when it comes to the starter characters, but I do think that such characters should be good enough to win games at a decent enough rate. Take Kirby again, for example. I did just praise him for being a very easy character to use, however, ever since Smash Melee, he's been low to bottom tier in many tier lists. And while the competitive scene does not compare to the casual scene, and Kirby is a character that is definitely leaning more on the casual side of things, I do think that if someone tries taking Sesh a little more seriously than casually, and they pick Kirby, it's gonna be a bit rough for them. Even if they're just playing online and they don't care that much about getting into Elite Smash or something. Or take Trapper for instance. He is consistently ranked in the lower echelon of tiering systems and is overall on the lower end of the kill rates. He overall isn't that good unless he did the dumb fucking strategy of camping at the basement, which makes him less fun to play as, at least in my opinion. Another character that is similarly easy to play is Pyro from TF2. He is intended to be easier for players to use when they're lagging, as the flame particles mean the aiming requirement isn't as heavy as the other characters. However, it is arguable that Pyro is one of the worst classes in the game as of right now due to him being restricted to close range and also being very easy for people to fight against. So now it's time for me to praise the Sea Vink, because Squire is one of the best starting characters in my opinion, at least design wise. When you first start out in Deceive, you only had the choice of Chavez, Ace, Squire, and Larson. However, when you first load into the tutorial, you're playing a Squire, so most players are probably going to gravitate towards him since people tend to play what they know. And if they pick Larson, you'll instantly know what kind of player they are. Squire is really conducive to this choice. He has a good pistol, teaching people how to aim. His expertise allows him to fight in goodies around the map, letting people know what to look for. And his passive grants a speed buff when you're damaged, allowing players to run away, reposition, or rush down their opponent and probably die doing so. 
And all of his other weapons and abilities feel really strong as well. His last few are insane, with a really powerful precision pistol, rewarding players for their newly found accuracy. Danger Sense allows you to preemptively avoid danger, or includes you in on if someone is near you. And Aegis Cover prevents headshots and provides some damage reduction at the start of fights, arguably the most important element of any fight in this game. So while he is certainly the tutorial character, and his starting abilities are made for him to be the tutorial character, his other abilities allow him to be a force to be reckoned with as you level up and get better at the game. And they are even good enough to be used by the highest tier of players, which is why S tier is for Squire. And while most games don't have the luxury of having the same loadout system that Deceive Inc. does, it is still important for tutorial characters to have strong abilities that can be used throughout a player's learning process, and not just while they are starting out. I'll bring up Peace Shooter from Garden Warfare as another tutorial character. Since they are one of the first characters you play as, and are one of the most recognizable ones besides the one everyone wants to fight for some reason. Garden Warfare has an even bigger customization system than even Deceive Inc. But even just the starting pea shooter variant with his starting abilities are really solid. His primary fire shoots peas that do splash damage, making aiming not much of a requirement, though if you do get a headshot it does a lot more damage. His hyper ability allows players to dodge other attacks while rushing up to enemy lines himself. His chili bee bomb attracts AI characters and deals a lot of damage, insert fart trick here, and his pea gatling is a strong ability that rewards more precision and positioning, since this ability roots you in the ground like an actual plant. Or take the slider shot junior from Satoon. It isn't the most amazing competitive wise, but it's still pretty solid, to the point where some x rank players can use it and do relatively well. Its main downside is that the shots have abysmal accuracy, but this downside does lead into the weapon's favor. The main gameplay mechanic of Satoon is the painting, and this weapon paints very well due to the widespread of shots. Its larger ink tank means it's more forgiving, and can allow it to shoot a lot, even after using a sub-weapon. Plus, its painting nature allows it to use its special weapon really quickly, and historically the junior always has some sort of protection special, allowing players to survive longer and support their team as well, a big part of Satoon's gameplay. So how can tutorial characters be better, and how can game devs make their own tutorial characters great? A tutorial character should be simple enough to use, as newer players are going to be trying to figure out how the game itself works. Abilities that lead your players to learn how the game works are ideal, as it can be quite confusing for players to know where to go and how to complete the objectives of the game. Also, if your game has a customization system that allows you to change out abilities or weapons, abilities that reward players for their growth and learning are great rewards for accomplished players. And finally, I do want to note that while having a good tutorial character is nice, your tutorial character should not be the only good character in your game. It'll be very beneficial for your game if your players have the ability to try out other characters that they may like, without the risk of those characters being less good than the one they started out with. There is a balance to everything, and keeping your characters balanced with one another is one of the most important things in making a multiplayer title. Even if your tutorial character is really, really hot. Thanks for watching my video. This outro sequence is a bit more scripted than the last one because I didn't want to just waffle about how unscripted my outro was. Thank you for the support on the recent videos, though it means the world to me that you all like my silly little outings besides Pokemon. Um, these past few weeks have been quite hectic for me, so I'm really sorry that I couldn't get this out sooner, nor could I really stream, but I'm, bit, I'm a bit less busy than I was, so it'll only get better from here. Uh, I already finished the script for the next video, so that should be coming out after this one soon. Um, I'll let you all know when it does come out. This is really bad. Um, yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.